evening, campers. As part of Plague, we have read Case Study by Grebe Kibinier. Now, Grebe Kibinier is uh, a Scottish writer who I've I've read three of their works now, if you include this one. And I'm always a little bit baffled to why Burnett is not considered one of my favourite authors. The first work of Burnett's that I read was his Buddy Project, which I came across because it was long listed, and then I believe it was shortlisted for the 2015 Man Booker Prize. But Burnett's name was then to come up uh, six years later, in 2021, when my neighbour was talking to me about a really good audiobook that she had read, which she had finished over the summer, and she said it was a translated French work uh, that was non-fiction about the disappearance of uh, this lady, and she uh, spoke at length when she stayed over, and I... I... I was fascinated. I was like, oh, like, yeah, like, tell me who this is. Like, I'm, I'm curious. This, this sounds good. I, I wanted something that I could orally listen to and I not have to think. I, I had a few deadlines that I needed to do with work and everything else. So something easy, something non-fiction. That sounds great. And she said, oh, it's by Gray McRae Burnett. And at that point, I kind of looked at her and went, Oh, I was like, oh no, this is a non-fiction. And I could see her, I could see her head working going, yeah, it, it, it was. I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, this, this is what Graham Burnett, <laughs> this is what Graham, Graham Burnett does. I was like, there's a sequel. Uh, they are called, um, what are the, um, hmm, that was weird. Oh, what's that? Oh, everything's got. Why? Why did that happen? The Gorski. Oh my God! May I bought this second hand. It has. It has a signature. <laughs> Went well. Ooh. Oh, my God, it's for three quid. It's signed. Get in. The Gorski novels. The disappearance of Adele. Bado. And then I listened to it, and it, it it's very reminiscent of uh, Graham K. Burnett. But if you go into these works, it might appear that it's. Graham McKay Burnett, who's writing them, but the actual authors of these just go by the initials GMB. It's very obvious to think, well, that's just his initials. But Graham McKay Burnett um, very much plays with this metatextuality of what a book could do or what a piece of non-fiction writing could do. And therefore, case study is absolutely no different. And we will talk about how... how Burnett did me dirty on this one. So the preface of this book is that the author GMB has, well, after the success of his buddy project, had written a blog post about a 1960s controversial counterculture psychiatrist called Collins Braithwaite. Not thinking anything of it, he let it sit on the internet, had no real traction. That is until Mr. Gray emails GMB, saying that, well, his cousin dealt with Collins Braithwaite and has all of her notebooks. He can't validate them, he can't give them any sort of credence apart from his own word. GRB is, as most people, sceptical. Mr. Gray says, look, I'll send them to you and if you're not happy with them, if you're, if you're, if you're against all of this, you can send them back to me. That, that's all I ask for. A GRB reads through this, tells us that, well, there are some topological changes there's some streets that are wrong but he'll do the best to edit and to to edit them in the best way possible so that they are fit for a reader but there are inaccuracies within the notebooks that he'll try to rectify at some point during this novel the game even works outside of the text because even at the author's acknowledgement in the back where he thanks his editor, where he says if he's got any information wrong, that's all on his part. But he's even talking about the notebooks that if they're wrong, that's down to the woman who wrote them, not himself. He He's tried to do his best possible. So who is the author of these notebooks? We, we don't know. We don't get given her name. All we're given is Rebecca Smith 
with a Y. Rebecca Smith with a Y decides that she's going to visit Collins Braithwaite. She is absolutely convinced that he is the reason why her sister Veronica killed herself by jumping off a bridge. Now she does some forward thinking and she doesn't want to just go in as herself because if her sister was in this mental state or was persuaded to suicide by Collins Braithwaite then she might have mentioned her sister. So Rebecca is as far removed from the originator of the notebooks as possible. Therefore everything that Rebecca Smith with a Y does is the juxtaposition and our narrator then becomes Rebecca. What's really interesting here is that she lulls us into saying, well, this is Rebecca now. Like, I've I've lost a part of myself. I, I don't know who I am because I have to keep up this charade. I have to keep up this facade. Or is Rebecca Smith, or with a Y, the actual me? Well, how would the reader know that? We don't even know who the original person is. All we have is that Rebecca Smith with a Y is the only real character, the only front we're, we're given. We're told that Rebecca Smith with a Y is not her, but who are we to even um, judge? How can we, how can we speculate? We, we, we don't know. Now, who should be able to identify the true self is psychiatrist Collins Braithwaite. Now, luckily, GMB has also authored a biography on Arthur Collins Braithwaite. And this book is back to back between the notebooks and the biography, where we learn about how Braithwaite is is not a psychiatrist in the traditional sense. And therefore, this book is sandwiched between the notebooks and the biography. And we're here to learn about Braithwaite. Like, where has he come from? We only have the view of Braithwaite from Rebecca, who clearly has an agenda. That's from the beginning. She's there to discredit him and find out why her sister committed suicide, most likely at the hands of Braithwaite persuading her to indulge in that act. So we have that agenda in our heads, but how did Braithwaite become the controversial psychiatrist? Uh, now, all of this is standard Graham K. Burnett fair. And, oh, do you know what? Do you know what? He absolutely suckered me. He absolutely suckered me. Do you know the neighbour who said, oh, I read this book and it's it's like non-fiction. Oh, it's amazing. She is doing her master's in psychology. And I, I, oh, I text her saying, oh my God, remember Gray McCabe it? He's got a new book about a psychoanalyst, psychiatrist, sent to the blurb saying, like, so far, it's all steeped in fact. I've read his bloody project. I I've read the first of the Gorski novels. I should know that this is the trap that Grey McCray Burnett puts you in. And I absolutely fell for it. Halfway through, something is, is mentioned. And I thought... That doesn't seem right. Like so, so, something, something's odd to you. This, this doesn't seem legitimate. And yeah, guess what? Yeah, Collins Braithwaite doesn't exist. And oh, honestly, I felt a pit in my stomach drop. Going, I, I've fallen for the trick. I've fallen for the trick that Craig for Craig Burnett really blurs the line of fiction and non-fiction, so much so that I, I knew going into this that most of the non-fiction is all made up. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I absolutely fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. That is how good Grey McRae Burnett is. I know his thing. I know his shtick. I've read the other novels. I went into this knowing... Oh, GMB, he's turned up before. Oh, he translated the Gorski novels. Oh, he, he's related to one of the characters within his bloody project that we're going to centre around. I knew it! I absolutely knew it! I knew it all! 
going in. I read the beginning and I was like, oh yeah, okay, okay. And I believed it. And I, I believe. I started Googling the guy. I thought, thought thinking I was going absolutely mad. I, I listened to an interview with Greg Bacabinet and purposefully he's not really talking about Colin's Braithwaite because I'm an absolute loon. My battery died. Everything's going wrong today. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. But interestingly, I listened to a podcast with Graham McKay Burnett. We're talking about case study and he purposefully doesn't really talk about Colin's Braithwaite. It, it's, as all, it's, it's as if it's so true. He's like, oh, just read the book. Like, you'll find out. But the reason is, is because like none of it exists. He is absolutely fantastic at what he does and the fact that like I fell for it uh just proves like how good he is at his at his field at his field of this like invented biography it's 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 really frustrating but the plot of this the plot of this has enough twists and turns and questions that you as the reader go but we wouldn't know this information or well, are you sure that's the case that it, it just like it deserves devouring because i i read this in one day and if you've if you've been a watcher of mine you know that i don't read books in one day that often but this day <laughs> absolute breeze he he's such a coy right like he's not a name that like instantly comes to mind but I, I can't help but like fall in love with this game that he's playing and I don't think knowing that all of this like never happened I don't think that matters because I you'll be aware of it and still be like bamboozled to how he has done it like so effectively this is an 8 out of 10 I think everyone should go and read it and Ah, oh, it's all the little things that he mentions. They're so frustratingly good. Like, oh, like he tells you like, oh, don't worry about this because oh, this is just an inaccuracy in the original source. And he's just made it up. Like he's he's read through what he's written and gone, yeah, some of my question that. I'll footnote it myself. Oh, so spectacularly done.